Okay, so finally I got something different on the workbench for you. That looks about the same, right? It looks about like a Silverado, but it's not. This is a uh, Trailblazer. It's 2001 through 2009. Um, and it'd be your Trailblazer Envoy. Both same same deal at the time. Uh, this one's actually a GMC Envoy. But um, yeah, we just got pretty much the uh, sa same setup. Let's go ahead and power this one up and see what's going on with it. So you see the speedometer stuck. Yeah, we definitely have a stuck speedometer. Um, looks like the uh, volt stuck too. So we'll go ahead and get this apart and see what's going on. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. All right, so we got this one apart. Uh, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Um, all right, so with these, uh, it's kind of similar to your uh, GM truck, except just a little bit smaller. Um, both your stepper drivers are sitting here, and that's going to drive all the stepper motors. Uh, then you got your, um, right here, you got your EEPROM, so that way if you're trying to reprogram it, you just kind of, do the same same as you would on the GM truck. Take it off. It's a different uh, data is laid out on it a little differently though. Um, so a trip reset, and then it's got the same incandescent bulbs in it like the um, uh, but in, any of the trucks or cars that GM was producing at the time. Um, so it didn't have LEDs. Uh, I've seen uh, some of uh, some of the, this guy right here will get uh, crack solder joints on him, um, and then some of the resistors up here, but not not so much as the trucks do, because uh, it's just a smaller package. So it, uh, I'm gonna guess that's why. Maybe it's just because of the way the board's laid out it doesn't flex as much. But yeah, definitely you'll see some crack solder joints up here. Um, some of these guys will get uh, crack solder joints on them, but not. N Crack solder joints aren't nearly as much of a problem on this particular instrument cluster, at least from what I've seen. I used to do a lot of these. Uh, I um, kind of figured I'd have a video on one by now, but I, I just haven't had any come in this year, really. this is I think this is my second one this year that I've done for the Trailblazers. I used to get them all the time. Um, I get them more than I get the Silverados, but uh, now, now it's kind of flipped. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm not clear my ads that I work on these. That, that could be it. Um, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I don't know, but uh, let's get to the repair now, so go ahead. All right, so um, I'm sure y'all saw what I was on the backside. There is a ton of corrosion on the back of this guy. Look at that. I've never seen that much corrosion on the back of one of these. It looks like it's been left out in the rain or something. But let's go ahead and get all of these uh, lights off of here. <sighs> Unfortunately, I don't know the polarity of these like I do with the truck one, so I'll end up having to, because he wanted LEDs in here. So I'll end up having to go back and forth a bunch, but... That's how you do them anyways when you don't know it off the top of your head. Get all of these off of here. And then get the corrosion cleaned up. And then I'll get the other bulbs put on and get the stepper motors on. These are a lot less work than the truck ones. There's just not so much stuff that needs to be reflowed on there. Uh, at least... In my experience, if uh, if you've uh, run into these clusters with tons of cracked solder joints, please comment down below. Let me know what you've seen on there, because this is I'm going off of my experience here on the Trailblazer. I will touch up. Um, oh, what 
What's the area? Oh yeah, yeah. These guys. Last last one I had it had uh, on some of these diodes had cracked solder joints. I don't think it was the small ones. I think it was these big ones. It's been like I said, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, the diodes I do remember having to touch up. We'll go ahead and touch them up since I already put flux there. Alright. Go ahead and hit up all the spots for the lights. Remember that scraping action just to get that little piece of metal off out of there that's left over from the uh, from the lights. I don't like to leave them in there. Uh, I'm sure it won't make any difference really, but I just don't like to leave crap in there, so go ahead and just touch it up real quick. It's funny to me how similar but how different this uh, instrument cluster is to the uh, full-size truck one. It's, it's got the exact same two VFDs on there. It uses the exact same stepper motors, stepper drivers. Um, you know, a lot of the components here are shared the same, and yet it's still a very different. Like it's got the exact same main IC on it, uh, so it's. But it's not just a different layout. The power supply is just done differently on here because it's got a bunch of transitions. It has the exact same power supply set up for the, the VFD, the same buck converter going on here, or sorry, boost converter going on here to supply the voltage for the main wires on there. But uh, yeah, so some things are the same. A lot of the, it's got the same um, EEPROM on here, same main IC. Uh, yeah, so a lot of the chips are exactly the same, but then you got a lot of difference in it, too. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting to me how similar yet different this board is and how uh, different of problems it has. Because it, it really doesn't have, like I said, that many problems with crack solder joints on here. It's mostly just burnout stepper motors on this one. Get all this corrosion off the back here. All right. Alright, well, I was trying to save some time because I got another client coming, so I skipped recording doing the LEDs, um, but same process as any of the other ones of um, uh, my videos you've seen, where you just got to get the polarity right and then solder them down on the surface. Uh, just putting in the stepper motors now. You just got to pop them all in there, flip it over and solder them down. It, like this is just like doing the trucks. Um, same with the the Impala instrument cluster is pretty similar to this. The only difference is uh, the EEPROM and all that. So, yeah. yep, these are all these X27 ones are pretty similar. Uh, Sunfire that also uses the same. Yeah, I'll just leave that plugged in. Alright, let's see, solder. Alright, so that's all there is to soldering them. And this is all very similar to just doing the truck. So, go ahead, give them a real quick test, make sure they are all working, and then put it all back together. 
I cleaned the flux off uh, off camera. And there we go. That's a repaired instrument cluster. By the way, that's green LEDs. I think this is, this is going to be the first time on the channel that you are seeing me do green LEDs. Everyone always wants blue or white, but uh, finally got some of the white green. I did that green one the other day, but I didn't record it. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and put this back together. All right, so this is a uh, finished rebuild of a Trailblazer instrument cluster with green LEDs. Uh, hopefully you can see that green. Uh, oh, and now the positive cable came off, so it's off. Oh, well, so, uh, yeah, hopefully you like this video. Uh, if you did like it, please like and give it the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it the thumbs down. If you like my content, maybe consider subscribing. Um, Maybe next time I'll have more time and I can get more in-depth on one of these Trailblazer ones, but uh, that's about all there is to it. It's about the same as a Silverado, so if you can repair a Silverado one, you can repair a Trailblazer. So, uh, yeah, go ahead, give it that thumbs up. See you next time.